Today we're getting into the latest Tesla updates, including some full self-driving updates from Elon, new Tesla solar roof tiles potentially, updates on the Model S yoke steering wheel, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, I talked a few videos ago about Tesla shutting down their Model 3 production line. The original reports were two weeks of a shutdown, and then Elon came in to curb those announcements, saying it was only a couple days due to parts shortages, and Fremont is back producing in full. Well, it appears that he was right, and they are speeding things up even faster than imagined, because Model 3 production times have now been moved up to two to four weeks after order. If you order today, delivery is estimated for two to four weeks, and this is likely an effort to push customers to take delivery before the quarter ends. Good news for Tesla and their production times not being too impacted by the global semiconductor shortage that has impacted many automakers. Next up, Tesla is opening one of their largest supercharger stations to date in Santa Monica, California. This new charger will be located on Santa Monica Boulevard and will include some amenities as well as restrooms. It reminds me a lot of the largest supercharger I've been to up in Kettleman City. That charger has about 40 stalls as well as a lobby with couches, tables, a coffee shop, restrooms, and vending machines. Likely this Santa Monica charger will be the same type of idea, but for regular use by customers as opposed to simply for road trips. The Kettleman City location is built specifically for people traveling, driving up and down California, whereas this Santa Monica charger is in a location that travelers wouldn't necessarily be driving through. It will have 62 stalls, and Tesla's aim is to make it open by Q3 of 2021. All of the stalls will be V3 chargers up to 250 kilowatts. Superchargers like this will be interesting to see Tesla add more and more of because it gives drivers who can't charge at home but live in a dense environment like Santa Monica the ability to own a Tesla and charge easily nearby. I'm definitely excited to see this come to be because Los Angeles is a very popular Tesla city and could always use more chargers. Even if you can charge at home, it's nice to have many options depending on where you want to go and Santa Monica is a great place for this many chargers to be installed. Next up is some hopefully big news for Tesla Solar. Tesla first announced their solar roof back in 2016. The idea of the product is that it combines solar panels with roof tiles in order to make a single package that looks better than the former and costs about the same. So if you need to re-roof your house and you want solar as well, you get a Tesla solar roof and you're good to go. It looks better and functions better than putting solar on top of an existing roof, which is also still an option that Tesla sells. When the solar roof was first announced, they announced four different versions, some more modern looking and some more traditional looking. They originally announced the smooth glass tile roof, Tuscan glass tile roof, slate glass tile roof, and textured glass tile roof. However, only one version of the solar roof has actually been installed on customers' homes, and the rollout of the product as a whole has been very slow. The version they have actually produced looks great, but won't be for everyone, and we've been waiting since 2016 to see the other roofs come to be, especially since they look even less like an actual solar roof. You can't really tell that there's solar panels on there, which a lot of people like. Well, some new Tesla solar roof tiles were spotted at Tesla's test facility near Fremont, California. Some drone photos, ironically posted by some Tesla short sellers, show Tesla solar roof tiles that are likely the Tuscan glass tiles being tested at scale. If we zoom in, these tiles do look quite a bit different than the original photos from Tesla, but it could be a signal of a design change on Tesla's end. For whatever reason, these other roofs have not come to be, so maybe Tesla has needed to do some design changes that they are now testing at scale. Tesla's solar roof is a product with a ton of potential and something that Elon has hyped up for a while. However, rollout continues to be slow and it very much seems to be on the back burner for Tesla. Elon has said that Tesla Energy will be the biggest part of their business long term, so hopefully we can see these new roofs come this year or next and see the solar roof be easily obtained by customers. I know a couple people who looked into Tesla Solar and decided against it due to various reports of poor communication and lack of timelines, so I'd love to see that change soon. Now, another product that Tesla has talked about for a long time and has yet to truly deliver is full self-driving. Elon has moved the goalpost a number of times when it comes to full self-driving, and many industry experts still think he or anyone is about a decade away from actually achieving true level five autonomy. To quickly review, level five autonomy is where there is no need to even have a steering wheel. The vehicle can drive for itself in every situation, even ones it has yet to see. 
Right now, Tesla sells a full self-driving package for $10,000. I talked in my one-year Model Y review about how this is way overpriced, and I wouldn't recommend buying it with your vehicle. For the features it delivers currently, it is not worth the cost, especially since you can add the package at any time, and Tesla will soon be offering a subscription for it. Elon has talked about the full self-driving subscription for a while now, but just recently gave us an update to say that it should arrive in Q2 of this year, meaning that June would be the latest it would arrive. This subscription would allow you to pay for full self-driving monthly, as opposed to the upfront $10,000 cost, and I think it's gonna prove to be a very popular option amongst owners. The main reason being that Tesla does not allow transfers of the full self-driving package. If you buy it with your car, it stays with the car. If you buy a new one, you buy it again, and you don't really get any extra value selling it with full self-driving versus selling it without. The subscription price is yet to be announced, but will likely be priced high. Multiple times, Elon has expressed that buying upfront, even at $10,000, will still make the most financial sense. The thing I don't think Tesla is really accounting for here, though, is that many Tesla owners who are the ones buying this package are the very people who want to upgrade their cars more often than six to eight years or so. While some of them will simply pay $10,000 again for their new car, most will not want to do this and will hold on to their old car for longer as a result. That's actually exactly my situation. I love my Model Y, but I've considered trading it in for a new Model 3. However, as soon as I realized that I'd lose full self-driving and would have to pay for it again, I decided that I would not be trading in my car. That basically just loses Tesla's sale of a new vehicle, which is where the subscription comes into play. The subscription will be a great option because you don't have to worry about it staying with the vehicle. Whatever your subscription terms are, if Tesla makes you sign up for a year commitment or something, you can trade in your car after a year if you decide to and just resume your subscription on the new car. One of the main reasons I think Tesla has waited so long though is because the full self-driving package in its current form is just okay. Realistically, this subscription option will be about $150 to $200 per month in order to make it the more expensive option than paying $10,000 up front. Additionally, for many customers, the currently included features will not be worth that much money each month. I have the package and I use certain features regularly and I still wouldn't pay that much. Which leads me to my main point. I think that Tesla is planning to roll out their full self-driving beta to all customers alongside the subscription. The full self-driving beta has been in the hands of a very limited number of customers and has been showing impressive progress and improvements handling very difficult driving scenarios. This beta is a complete rewrite of the foundation of the autopilot software that allows the vehicle to truly drive for itself on city streets, making turns, stopping at lights, handling roundabouts, and more. This is a feature that Tesla has promised for a long time and why the price of full self-driving is now $10,000. It's an investment, just like buying a stock you think is underpriced while others think it's overpriced. You are paying $10,000, or whatever that monthly fee ends up being, for a feature that has yet to arrive, but when it does, could be revolutionary. If you pay $10,000 for full self-driving just for the features it includes, it's overpriced. But if you buy it for the future and what Tesla is working on, it could prove to be far underpriced. I said that I think the full self-driving beta will roll out to all customers alongside the subscription, and part of that thinking was thanks to a few tweets from Elon. First, he responded to someone asking about a general release of a full self-driving beta and expanding the beta. He responded saying, quote, yes, beta will be offered much more widely when version nine is done, hopefully next month. Based on Elon's time predictions for full self-driving and tweets, I wouldn't count on April, but this shows that they are close to a new version that could be made publicly available. Furthermore, when asked about the timeline for a full public release of Tesla's full self-driving package coming in Q2, Elon somewhat confirmed it saying, quote, sounds about right, but we want to be very careful with this transition period. Q2 of this year would coincide with the subscription, but they will be rolling it out very slowly. Most likely it will come to customers they know and employees, and then to the full general public later in the year, if everything goes as planned. On top of this, they also will have to be dealing with regulation and NHTSA possibly stopping them from truly rolling out a self-driving technology to customers while it's still in beta. Here's the thing though, if Tesla actually delivers what Elon has been talking about, this will massively improve the value of every single Tesla on the road and create an insane amount of demand for their vehicles. Overnight, every single Tesla that has been sold since Tesla introduced this autopilot suite will be given the ability for full self-driving. Even if you don't have the package, you'll have the option to subscribe and access something that literally no other consumer vehicle can do. If it can drive itself and handle every situation, this will be a technology that tons of people will want to have. I personally think it will be far longer than one year before you don't actually need a driver in there as a backup, but when a driver is no longer needed, the implications are huge. 
Your vehicle could drive you to the hospital if something happened to you, a feature Elon has mentioned. Your vehicle could drive you home after a night out drinking and do so far safer than you can. In general driving as well, your car could drive safer than you and allow you to be completely distracted, getting work done, or doing something you want to do with your commute time. And most importantly for Tesla, this would allow your car to become a robo-taxi. You could send your car out on Tesla's robo-taxi network, or maybe even through a service like Uber if they allow it, and it could be making money for you drive sharing while you stay at home. Again, there's a big if with everything I'm stating here, but if it comes to be, which Elon seems pretty confident about this year, the value of every single Tesla sold in the last few years is going to skyrocket. Not just the value of the full self-driving package, but of Tesla's vehicles themselves since they will be the only vehicles that support this feature. Right now, Tesla sells some of the best electric cars with some of the best driver assistance features, but soon they may be selling some of the best electric cars that are fully autonomous. My biggest hesitation with all of this though is that I don't want to end up getting excited for something that ends up letting me down. We've seen the full self-driving beta and it is doing incredible things, but it is by no means perfect or level 5. Beta testers still take over regularly. When Tesla introduced Smart Summon, Elon tweeted about it blowing your mind. He's not wrong because it's pretty mind-blowing to see a car driving and choosing what route to take all on its own from across a parking lot. But this feature is still in beta and it's very buggy. I sometimes summon my car straight forward, but after using Smart Summon for fun a few times, I have never actually wanted to use it in a parking lot. Especially in a crowded parking lot, it's extra cautious, as it should be, but just ends up frustrating other drivers. On top of this, I have never smart summoned my car without it first failing on the first try. The official description from Tesla says, quote, your car will navigate more complex environments and parking spaces, maneuvering around objects as necessary to come find you in a parking lot. It's one of those things that's like, well, technically that's what the feature does, but it's just not as good as it sounds. I don't think full self-driving will be this way, but I'm still a little bit concerned. I really hope that Elon proves me wrong though, because I'm all on board for a self-driving future. And if they do it, I think we'll see both the value of Tesla's vehicles skyrocket and the demand for them skyrocket as well. Again, there is always an if there, but it feels like a very underappreciated part of Tesla. Now moving on to some more Tesla news, I've been giving regular updates about the new refreshed Model S. Last I had talked about, we had only seen the Model S in the wild with a round steering wheel. Well, we got our first sighting of the Model S with the yoke steering wheel courtesy of the kilowatts. This is good to see because many customers were starting to worry that the yoke wheel wouldn't actually be made and the round one is what would actually come to production. The round wheel has the same stockless design but it's pretty much a normal Tesla wheel aside from that with the scroll wheels from the Model 3 and Y. While seeing the yoke steering wheel in public confirms that Tesla is still making it, it still hasn't technically been deemed legal by NHTSA. They originally said that they couldn't confirm yes or no and had reached out to Tesla and just this week when Tesla Rati reached out, it appears that nothing has changed. NHTSA sent pretty much a non answer but did confirm that they are in communication with Tesla regarding the wheel. Everything at NHTSA runs pretty slow typically, so we'll see how this approval process works as Tesla plans to ship this refreshed Model S this month. They may have to start shipping with the round wheel and then get approved and then ship the yoke later, but most likely this will get approved with no real need to worry. Hopefully Tesla will offer both options for customers though, since I've seen a number of customers who want to buy a Model S but definitely don't want the yoke steering wheel. Last up today, we have a couple pieces of news from Tesla in China. First, there was a report in China stating that Tesla would be introducing battery swapping. Quote, Tesla's China business registration recently added sales of battery swap facilities for new energy vehicles, sparking speculation that it may support battery swap like NEO. This really made no sense since Tesla tried this idea a few years back and abandoned it. Additionally, they're planning to shift to a unibody battery design that would make battery swapping completely impossible. While well, Tesla has denied any entry into battery swapping, quote, a Tesla official said the company believes electric vehicle charging is the best way to power its vehicles and that battery swapping is riddled with problems and not suitable for wide scale use. This makes a lot of sense and this quote from Tesla seems to take a little bit of a jab at NEO. They are a very popular EV startup in China that is going all in on battery swapping. It's very impressive technology but doesn't appear to have the ability to be scaled without issue, which is why Tesla abandoned it with the Model S. Over in China as well, well, Tesla is reportedly buying up more land next to their factory to potentially build more factory. They already have plans to increase production there, and there is a new deal for the sale of 113 acres of land next to Tesla's current Shanghai factory. Tesla has not been officially confirmed as the buyer, but multiple reports are stating that it is them, and it makes a lot of sense. 
Tesla plans to continue expansion there and plans to make their $25,000 car there in the next few years, so we will likely see some announcements of Giga Shanghai expansion later this year. That's all for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my one-year review of the Model Y and find out if I'd do it again, you can watch that video linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.